Hello everyone. It has been a while since I have recorded the last video about Meatcat. At that time, we were looking at 0.9.1. In the meantime, we have arrived at 0.9.4 and quite a significant amount of elements have changed in the meantime. So let's have a quick look at what has changed and um, bear with me if I'm not diving into too much detail on the every single feature because that probably would deserve a video of its own. And uh, a couple of videos will be published in the next couple of days, just to make sure that we are covering the different things in the level of detail they deserve. So let's have a quick look. Once again, 0.9.4. So we'll find the latest releases of, of, from, of Meerkat, either with here on the releases pages within GitHub or Let's not forget that you can always check for the latest version within Meerkat itself. You click on help and um, update. Then you will have an information about which version is the latest. You will have an info, um, additional set of um, information over here, what it contains. And we highly encourage you to actually regularly update your Meerkat version. Not only that you can benefit from the latest features that we have introduced, but especially considering the enormous amount of bug fixes we have invested over the last couple of months to make Mirkut more stable, probably paid off significantly. So we highly encourage you to use that. Okay, so let's speak about a couple of things that have changed. Let's start with some visuals and very straightforward things. The very first thing you may recognize that um, whenever you're looking at Meerkat on a high resolution display, as many of us have nowadays, you recognize in the past that the icons that Meerkat was using to display the different buttons over here in the toolbar or over here actually became a bit blurry at high resolution or very difficult to read at all and to, and to identify at all due to the fact that they're bitmap based and there is um, an intrinsic level of detail loss that you will see when you're trying to make them visible on a high res display. Since the last versions, all the different icons within and the graphics within Meerkat are actually vector based. So they scale with the resolution over here. You can make that bigger and they will grow in size. Um, as long as they fit on the screen, make them bigger over here, they will become even bigger than, but they will shrink accordingly so that if you are having, on the other hand, of the spectrum, a very small display, actually you can make it very tiny and still can access and can establish the functionalities of the different things over here. So that's the first thing that um, would probably catch your eye. The second thing, if you have downloaded the very new um, version of Meerkat and have started for the very first time, you will have been greeted by this thing over here, by the tips and tricks section. And I'm going to just jump to the very start. Um, this is new. It's by definition, it contains a couple of different um, tips and tricks that are part of the, the Meerkat distribution. But whenever you click over here on automatically update, I have already done that then it will download additional tips and tricks from the internet that you can benefit from some insights of features that you may or may have not known about Meerkat so far. When you are actually have read through all of that, you can always click on um, the show tips and start up and disable that functionality so you don't want to be greeted with it. But whenever you want to access it, you can actually go to the help menu and your tips and tricks is always available. So you can look, look at that. And it not only provides you some text information about it, but as well about a couple of features like try it out, when you can see that um, it will generate an example for you to demonstrate the functionality that it advertises. So for instance, over here, a rectangle has been added and an outline has to be created around that rectangle. Okay, so, so much, much for tips and tricks. Speaking, Speaking about some visuals over here, something may have changed as well. You do know if you are a regular Meerkat user, whenever you want to 
drag a selected element or a group of elements around. You're supposed to click on that center um, rectangle over here, selection area, and then you can drag it around and so on and so forth. Um, that is no longer necessary. It's still it's a probably the preferred method, but you just click somewhere within that rectangle and keep your mouse held down for a bit. It's around half a second, to be honest. Then you can drag that stuff around too. You still have that the previous functionality that you have. You can always start to select things from over here or here, and that will still be available for you and help you to select elements, of course, being to your heart's desire. But maybe this is a useful feature for you if you're used from uh, the functionality, used to the functionality in Apple programs where they are just drag somewhere, click on the background of a selected element and drag it out. Okay, so much for that. So let's speak a bit about the features underneath. Um, there is something that those of you who own the fiber laser may already know from the default program that comes along with that, easy catalyst, the program that is regularly part of the distribution. Fiber lasers are very dependent on a automatic fill of a shape and an automatic um, follow-up on an off the path on a fiber laser. And that automatic fill is called Hatch and that automatic follow of the shape is called wobble. So let's speak about the hatches first. Whenever you have a closed element like this one over here, could become even a bit more um, sophisticated, like a vector, whatever else. So let's make this and just close that stuff over here. Uh, whenever, whenever you have something, something like that, you can either do a regular fill, such as clicking on the select on the element. Okay, let's select for this one over here. If you click on that, click on properties, you always have the opportunity to fill that and it will be filled solid. And that is represented within Minicad as an, as an raster operation. So it will actually go around that lines, line by line, line by line by line by line. And that is normally taking a significant amount of time. That is not necessarily the best way to deal with that, especially if you're considering that your laser beam has a physical width. It's not um, a micron wide and actually a fraction of a millimeter wide. So you don't need to go over the internal laser resolution and scan along those lines, especially considering that sometimes those Movements which are usually being done either horizontally or vertically may create an ugly pattern on your material. So another way to deal with that is actually the hatches. And just clicking over here, and you do see that when I click on that, the element is here automatically filled with a pattern. And over here, you just see there's a group selected, which is called hatch. It has some properties, and I was going to still look about that. And the contained elements will all be filled with that. If I enter, for instance, another element over here and drag that into that group, into that hatch group, it's going to be filled with that hatch too. And whenever you're changing the, oh, let me just select that one over here. And click on parametric editing and change the look and feel of that. Changing the stuff, you see the hatch pattern is following the shape of the selected object. And while this um, hatch over here may be actually a bit wide to fulfill the needs for a completely filled one, it may still be helping you if you want, for instance, to, to create a kind of a, of a pattern over here. But you can always change those things over here. Let me just make that over here. And you do see that you have different um, opportunities to change that. One of that is the hatch distance. I just changed that from one millimeter, for instance, to five millimeters just to make sure that you see what's going on. 
And if you want to really fill it, then probably the pattern that you want to use is a big smaller range size like 0 0.1. And that is more or less already something which is closely resembling a proper fill of the object. You can change the pattern a bit in terms of changing. Let's make that bigger that we can see what's happening. One millimeter. Okay. And you can change, for instance, over here, the angle and so forth. Okay. So that's for this one over here. There are different patterns. Just play around that. There is a combo box over here. You can change that to have a different um, set of settings over there. Okay, so much for this. Let's take another example. That was for the hatches. Let's speak about wobbles, especially if you want to cut through certain sensitive materials that are difficult to cut. Um, the things you're used to is, well, decrease the speed, increase the power, do it a couple of times, which is fine for certain materials, but some materials seem to weld together so they are very difficult actually to cut and you may know that from a fiber laser but it is equally true for for a regular beam laser like a, a diode laser a gerbil one or our beloved k40 there is something we called a wobble so you're trying to artifi artificially widen the path or the line that you try to cut across a certain material. Let's use this one. There isn't yet a visual representation in terms of an icon over there, but you can actually do that if you right click on the element in the operations tree and choose apply special effect. Here you will find again the hatches at the top, but you will find again additionally a so-called wobble. Let's use that for a time being. Okay, well, let's make that bigger that we can see what Mika is trying to establish. And just for the sake of simplicity, again, this is represented by a group. I very intentionally hide that or make it, well, let's make it very small. Let's make it one mil and a different color that we can see, which is the original line. And probably you want to actually use a, a non-stroke to just have the wobble, but okay, let's focus on this one for a second. And you do here see the wobble. Let's make that even bigger. There is a, a small called internal resolution. We can make that smaller to, to make it resemble a bit more, but um, that may not actually be too much for the need to cut through that material. And it may take too much time to really um, have that circle wobble around that line where it falls. Just make sure. You can see it's really following the complete length of that path. And by the way, I could use the very same over here. Just take this one, drag it into the wobble. Come on. And you can see the very same thing is done over here too. And make the same thing that we can just see it, make it one mil, a very tiny, with of the original path, let's make that red just for the sake of to make it, oops, not the fill stroke, please. That we can see what's happening over here. And you see the very same pattern is applied to that path. Okay, so you can change that according to your heart's desire. If you click on the wobble, you have the properties of that. In fact, you can change between different patterns. So for instance, you can have a center. Um, you can have it left and right of the path that you are following. You can have different stuff like a sine wave, a star tooth. Make that a bit bigger that we can see what's happening over here. Just play around that a jigsaw, which may be actually a bit not good enough. And last but not least, you have as well the opportunity to do something which is more a, from a static perspective, a helpful thing. Oop, takes a bit to calculate that because it's calculated all the time. So let's give it a second or two. It's probably 
too narrow. That's the reason why it takes too much time. Okay, so I think you shouldn't do. <laughs> okay, let's wait for that. Um, the meander is actually some of those Greek patterns that you may know from um, different um, books where you can see ancient drawings and it's used. Okay, let's make that a bit bigger, 0 0.1. Uh, let's make it 0 0.5 and we have the same pattern there and now it becomes whatever it was just too narrow okay so you can see it's really following meandering around that stuff there are different patterns over here and actually that may to a lesser degree be useful as a separating and severing mechanism but it may actually serve a bit of a purpose from an aesthetical perspective okay so much for that let's talk about a couple of other things that are new to Meerkat. You may know from the past, if you have dealt with complex designs, that it may have actually taken a significant amount of time to load complex designs. And complex designs are designs which contain a couple of hundred, a couple of thousand vector elements that um, Meerkat needs to look at, needs to initially um, interpret it, and so, and so forth. So while this was taking its sweet time, um, the, the latest versions have seen a significant acceleration of that process. They still take a couple of seconds or 20 to 30 seconds to load, but they are much faster than they have been in the past at loading exercise. So let's have a look at, at this thing over here. And you do see, despite the fact that we're talking about a significant amount of, of different things, we're talking about um, 10,000 <laughs> elements over here, another 10,000 over there. So something like 20,000 elements within that file, a significant amount of information um, as we have just learned. And still, it only took about 15 to 20 seconds to load, I think, which is a completely acceptable um, amount of time. And this um, file over here contains an additional feature that has been introduced with Meerkat. It is able to recognize the layers that Inkscape, hopefully you're aware of that program, if not, I have encouraged you to have a look at Inkscape, a very good program to design vector graphics um, on, available for all the, the major platforms. And one of our greatest open source projects of all time, I'd like to say. Um, Inkscape has a feature which is called layers, which is you can define a certain subset of your design and put that on a certain layer, and you can hide that layer. And then you can switch between layers that facilitates and simplifies significantly the working with a complex design where you don't want to go to, um, to deal with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of objects, but you just want to focus on, for instance, the, um, the lettering of a design or the grid in the background or whatever it is. Have a look at that feature. Nevertheless, Mikat is supporting, is recognizing and supporting that and everything which is visible ends up here in the main section of elements and everything which is an invisible layer will end up in the rec marks. Rec marks, as you know, are those elements which won't be burnt, which are still visible on the screen, and you can actually use them to align certain things and to put away stuff that you don't want to burn on that one. Um, execution of your laser job um, and just put them into rec marks. And when you're ready and you want to deal with another thing over there, you just put them back on the rec marks, from the rec marks into the elements. I'm not going to do this over here, but just to remind you whenever you want to put something from the elements into the rec marks, you either direct that down there or you right click and move to rec marks. And the opposite is true. You just drag the stuff from here to there. Let's just do that just for simplicity. Um, move that stuff back over here, and now it has ended up here again and become visible and become burnable. Or you just um, use again the context menu and click move back to elements. Okay, so much for that. Let's just clear that because that may 
take a bit of time. But you may have seen from the last examples that um, actually this whole sheet of those tags that we wanted to burn was a bit inconvenient to work with. Not only did it take a lot of time to load comparatively, uh, but it was a bit difficult to have a look at that, especially if you wanted to, to change your design. You may know about the, the placement feature of Meerkat. Meerkat is able regularly, the stuff that you're designing, you're designing that here on your laser bed. I encourage you, and I will link to that, to have a look at the, the great video that um, Tetherize created about the the placement features indicating uh, what it is used and so on and so forth, what is the difference to a regular um, design and so forth. So in a very simplified manner, usually you're designing stuff um, on your laser bed and the laser area, the design area over here is a representation of your laser bed. So if you would put a sheet exactly of that size over here, 320 by 200 millimeters, roughly 310. That's the size over here in X axis and the Y axis, 210. So if you would put a piece of paper or whatever um, on that laser bed, those things would exactly end up at that location. So your origin is over here at the zero. Point zero location x is zero and y zero. You can change that. Um, you can still make your design, but you said, okay, well, you know, I would like and not want to drag that stuff around that may be either tedious or it's not what I would like to have. And you can just state, okay, let's have a starting point over here. And I clicked here as you can see here that job starting point or replacement on the scene. Let's just have a quick look on the simulation to see what's happening. And you, you do see it's no longer up here, but the element over here, let's just take that over here. You can see that's the selection area. That is exactly adding up at that point over here with it or where I put that um, location. And while that may not seem too useful at one point, but you can add another one over here. And then the third one over there. Okay, I only put two over here, but you do see the complete job is being repeated at that different areas. So you can actually pick a rather simple single design and burn that at multiple places on your lazy bed. That is a very powerful feature. And you can actually you can see them over here. If you no longer need them, just delete them by clicking the delete key here and then everything will be back to normal and you will recognize that stuff is just being just done over here. If you want to repeat the effect that you were having on the previous design that we loaded, you do remember those nice dinosaurs on a complete sheet of material. Well, let's assume we want to have this one over here. Can we just make that slightly smaller? Let's make that a a small, a tiny, tiny picture, two eyes, you have to face, and let's just take that one over here and create a smiling face. Okay, that's not a great design, but just you know, I just can't see what I'm looking at. Okay, let's try to, let's imagine we would like to design, uh, to to actually to, to do this stuff multiple times on a single sheet. Once again, click here to a starting point and double click this one. And you have here the properties as you always have for replacement. And the interesting thing, the new feature that has been introduced with 0 0.9 point, well, I don't know, it was a 0 0.2 or 0 0.3, I can't remember from the top of my head, actually, but definitely since the last time I made a video, is you can actually create a couple of repetitions. I would like to have a five times five grid over here. And please leave one centimeter 
plays between the different smileys in every direction. And let's see what's going to do that. Okay, let's click on simulate. Uh, maybe not actually, sorry, that's not the difference over here. Let's do the gap. Okay, let's it's 50 millimeters. And here we have 40 millimeter most of the way. Up, up, up. Let's do it again. Probably still overlapping each other. Okay, but now that's that's good enough. And you recognize over here that you have your smileys across the sheet done repeatedly. Okay. And you can see from where um, the different things are running and so, and so forth. And there is still as well an opportunity for you to play around with that. And actually, probably I will do a, a video of its own because there is too much to be discussed over here. But that's, let's say, a peek into the feature of a placement that you have with a grid. Okay, so probably I've got hundreds of different things that have been introduced since um, 0.9.1, but there is one last feature that I at least want again to give you a, a quick peek, which is the material manager. Um, as you may all know, not only may, as you surely know, different materials require different laser settings. There is, it makes a difference if you would like to engrave that smiley face that we're seeing on a regular piece of wood, if you would like to engrave it on a piece of plastic, if you would like to engrave it on a piece of paper, and so on and so forth. So you need different settings for different materials. And you need not only um, settings for different materials per se, but as well, for instance, especially if you would like to cut through those materials as well regarding their thickness. And Nikit has now introduced a so-called material library where you can actually store the settings for the operations that you have in a given design. And if you find them useful, for instance, to, to um, engrave a picture on a piece of slate or on a piece of wood, can save those two different settings and whenever you would really want to do something similar like that again in the future you just reload that setting and your operations are exactly at the values that you require this will become a video of its own because this takes a bit of time to explain i assume and this video has already <laughs> um, extended beyond the point at which i initially wanted to do but hopefully this gives you a bit of an insight what new things and new features have appeared on the scene since the last time um, that I created a year from 0 0.9.1 now to 0 0.9.4, 9.4, sorry about that. And um, hopefully that was creating a bit of interest in those new features. Have a look at that. Whenever you have a question, um, please reach out to the developers either on GitHub or on the, preferably on, on Discord, where there is a Meerkat channel around that. And if you don't know how to address that and how to, to reach it, just have a look here at the help. There is that link to the Discord channel, and you will arrive at that area where you can reach out to developers, ask for support, ask for help, come up with some ideas um, how to improve improve the usability and extend the functionality of Meerkat. Usually, Tetrarise is a, a very good listener. And um, if you can demonstrate for what you are requiring that, he will step out of his way to help you and to make you become a happy Meerkat user. OK, so much for all of that. Thank you for watching. Talk to you next time.